Hello and welcome to Film in 5, where we review movies old and new to give you our thoughts on the films we've been watching here at More Movies. My name is David Roberts and in this episode I'm going to be talking about The Black Cauldron, the 1985 animated feature that almost destroyed Disney's animation department. And just a warning that I will be talking about some of the plot points, so if you still haven't seen this classic movie, consider this a spoiler alert. The film is very loosely based on the Chronicles of Prydain, a pentology of children's high fantasy written by Lloyd Alexander. Our hero is Taran, from the land of Prydain, a teenage boy and assistant pig keeper who dreams of becoming a famous warrior. Delbin the Enchanter, Taran's boss, learns that the evil Horned King is searching for a mystical relic known as the Black Cauldron to create an invincible army of undead warriors. Fearing he will kidnap and use his magical pig, Hen Wen, to locate the cauldron, Delbin directs Taran to take Hen Wen to safety. Unfortunately, Taran's foolish daydreaming causes Hen Wen to be captured by the Horn King's dragon-like creatures. Taran follows them to the Horn King's castle and sneaks in to rescue Hen Wen, but is captured and thrown into the dungeon. Another captive, named Princess Ilanwai, frees him as she tries to escape. In the catacombs beneath the castle, Taran and Elanwai discover the ancient burial chamber of a king. Taran arms himself with the king's sword, which is imbued with magic that allows him to effectively fight the Horn King's minions, thus fulfilling his dream of being a warrior. From here, Taran and his friends must complete their quest to stop the Horn King at all costs. The film's plot is simply a mess, a convoluted labyrinth of undetailed, unexplained and underdeveloped ideas. It is easy to see why the film ended up this way, however. Through a prolonged decade of development hell, The Black Cauldron became an albatross around the neck of the animators at the House of Mouse. Through corporate politics and mismanagement, many people were assigned to the project before swiftly moving on elsewhere. During a test screening in 1984, the film was deemed to be traumatising to the young audience, with children running out in terror. Newly appointed Disney Studio Chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg demanded over 10 minutes of cuts before its release in a battle with the new CEO Michael Eisner, further butchering the fractured film. Some of these cuts are even noticeable in the final movie, creating jumps in the film's soundtrack. The first cut of the film was incredibly dark and strayed far from the kind of movie Disney would put out. The first culture clash happened on a much anticipated film that was years in the making and millions over budget. The Black Cauldron. The first couple of weeks I was at the studio, I saw The Black Cauldron. It was a very dark movie and a very troubled movie. This is just way, way, way too uh, violent and too scary. You have to edit some of these things out. And they said, well, you can't edit an animated movie. And I said, well, of course you can edit an animated movie. And they said, well, no, you can't. Hey, no, you don't. You honestly, you would think that I was causing World War III there at the studio, because I literally said, well, you know what? You get the film and bring it to an edit bay, and uh, I'm going to show you how you edit an animated movie. I mean it. From blood and violence, including decomposing bodies and sacrificial suicide, to kidnapping and overtly sexual imagery, the film was a far cry from Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. The cut scenes contained even darker elements, including the melting faces of undead soldiers. There was a belief by some at Disney that the company wasn't cool, and that teenagers would never go to see a Disney cartoon, so they set out to entice them with this darker material. In the 80s we had seen family films get darker in places, films like The Secret of Nim, The Dark Crystal, and even scenes of melting Nazis in Raiders of the Lost Ark. However, the filmmakers failed to understand that audiences really expected Disney's films to be completely family friendly, suitable for the very youngest viewers. In the end, The Black Cauldron became a commercial and critical failure, the worst in the company's history, due to the massive costs of the production. Its failure almost caused the heads at Disney to finally close the animation department, after years of decline. It was only due to the fact that The Great Mouse Detective was already in production that this never happened. Luckily, The Great Mouse Detective was a hit, and Disney Animation Studios would go on to renewed success in the next decade, with a string of hits during the Disney Renaissance. Despite its many flaws, The Black Cauldron is quite an interesting film, and visually stunning for its time. It's the first Disney animated film to feature computer-generated imagery. It may have stumbled, but it serves as some inspiration for darker tone material to come, such as The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and even some Pixar movies. It doesn't seem as dark compared to modern day efforts, and has since become a cult classic. 
But more than anything, the film is notable due to the changes it brought about. That's it for this review. What did you think of The Black Cauldron? Did you enjoy this film as a child? Let us know in the comments down below. Till next time, take care of yourself and keep watching more movies. That's it for this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And remember to like, share and subscribe right here on YouTube. For more film reviews and articles, join us on our website, moremovies.co.uk. Or join us on social media at More Movies For You. That's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all across the board. You know the score. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us at buymeacoffee.com or join us on patreon.com. Links in the description down below. And for more filmtastic content, click one of the buttons on screen now.